The information being presented relies on legal principles based on federal laws in the United States. The information being presented is not intended to be specific legal advice. Even if you ask questions, always consult legal counsel to ensure you are in compliance with the law. Say you're writing an article about an event that happened in your church to submit to the Communicate or the Southern Tidings. This event was so great it was covered in your local newspaper. You think, hmm, this article is already worded so well. I'll just copy some of their paragraphs to use in my article. Doing this would be plagiarism. Plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. This can be written material, photography, graphic design, music, lyrics, even choreography. Creative works such as these are someone else's intellectual property. Intellectual property is defined as a work or invention that is the result of creativity, such as a manuscript or design to which one has the rights to and for which might apply for a patent, copyright, trademark, etc. Using intellectual property that you don't have permission to use is illegal and could put your church at risk of a lawsuit or a fine. So let's dive into some of the do's and don'ts when creating content for your church. Imagery such as photography, design, layout, and logos are also considered intellectual property. Did you know that the term Seventh-day Adventist Church is a trademarked phrase, as well as the flame logo that accompanies it? This means that legally, not just anyone can start a church and call it a Seventh-day Adventist Church. They have to be within our system to use our branding. The General Conference has established branding guidelines that lay out exactly how the Adventist branding can be used, including fonts, colors, sizing, backgrounds, and more. As a communication leader, take some time to familiarize yourself with the North American Division's branding guidelines. Some branding guidelines might seem like a hassle to implement, or maybe you just don't like them, but proper use of them ultimately protects you and your church. What about photography? Photos are also considered intellectual property. If you're a graphic designer for your church, you want to use photos in your material that you have license to use. This means you can't download a photo from Google Images and use it on your event flyer. You also can't use your photos on someone else's event flyer that you copied. Graphic design and layout are also considered intellectual property. There are many resources where you can find free graphic design templates that include a usable photo library such as Canva. For more information on photography and graphic design resources, check out our previous training, Design for Impact, or reach out to our office if you have additional questions. What about if we're taking our own photos in church? To my understanding, if a church employee is using church-owned equipment, all images or video produced are property of the church. On the flip side, if a church volunteer is using a personal camera to document a church event, the volunteer is the intellectual property owner of that content, unless otherwise stated through written agreement between the volunteer and the church. Lastly, if a church volunteer is using a church camera, the volunteer is still the owner of the intellectual property, unless a written agreement is in place that grants the church all ownership over any intellectual property. I encourage your church to create specific guidelines for all volunteers stating who owns the intellectual property being created. This will not only help your church, but will also help protect the individual creators. Let's talk about streaming and CCLI. We live in a digital age, especially post COVID, where we want to be able to reach as many people as possible in as many ways as possible. To do this, many churches have begun live streaming their services online. Platforms like YouTube and Facebook have made that incredibly easy for most churches to do. But just because it's easy doesn't necessarily mean that it's legal. Let me ask you these questions. Is your church streaming their service online? Is your church copying or distributing song lyrics or sheet music from anywhere, including the Seventh-day Adventist hymnal? Are you projecting music lyrics on your screen or broadcasting pre-recorded music in a live stream? 
If you answered yes to at least one of these questions, then your church needs a copyright streaming license. A copyright license protects not only your church, but also the copyright owner of whatever intellectual property you're using. There are a few different options for copyright license, depending on the extent of your needs and services. The most common copyright license available to churches today is the Christian Copyright Licensing International License, or CCLI. Depending on what options you select with your CCLI license, your church can live stream worship songs performed in your church service by your band or other live performers, store lyrics, print and duplicate songs, record services, make custom song arrangements, project and display lyrics, and even translate songs. CCLI offers a streaming license also, which allows churches the ability to post live recorded worship services online through their own website or on social media sites. Both of these services cover nearly 450,000 of the songs authorized by the CCLI license. The CCLI license covers essentially all the reproduction rights a church would need, but it doesn't cover performance rights. Performance rights need to be considered when any music is performed outside of religious services. CCLI assists with any songs intended to assist the church in congregational singing, while CCS covers any public performance outside of worship services. CCS, or Christian Copyright Solutions, authorizes churches and ministries to legally perform live or pre-recorded versions of over 28 million songs anywhere outside of religious services. This includes music before and after services, retreats, conferences, special events, ceremonies, and vacation Bible schools. But just having the license isn't enough. You'll need to work with your team to verify that your church is following all the guidelines in order to accurately show the proper licensing information. Many times, that means you'll need to be showing the correct credit information in-house and on stream. Copyright laws protect creators. Would you go into a restaurant and expect to receive food and service for free? Just as cooks and servers are paid for their work, writers, photographers, designers, singers, and songwriters deserve compensation for their creations. And we as a church strive to treat others the way we want to be treated. To learn more about copyright laws and intellectual property within your church, visit AdventistRisk.org.